My name is Lorna Kinnaird, a Scottish genealogist with Dunedin Links Genealogy in Edinburgh. Welcome to my presentation, Perfect Planning, Writing a Research Plan. Overview, why a research plan is important, creating a research plan with some key points to include and to consider, useful tips from experience, and using an example for you to consider. Why a research plan is important. Well, data collection is a necessary part of the work we carry out, either for ourselves or for our clients. For many of us, we collect certificates for every one of our ancestors from the cradle to the grave and create mountains of paperwork, rather like the lady in the picture above. But can we honestly say that we are being productive to our project by using this method of research? Do we really need a certificate for every one of our family? Or is there a much easier way of recording that information in one place and reduce our carbon footprint? and our filing systems. There has to be an easier way of recording our data and our approach to the research so that we don't end up drowning in it. For many of us, we start a project with a little spring in our step and hope that we can find what we're looking for from the record relatively easily. But then over the course of a few months, we start to realise as our research expands that we are researching um, far more than we had originally anticipated and it might involve further uh, visits to other archives and therefore the task then becomes quite daunting. The success of a project requires you to be organised to define your focus and your method, how you are going to access the data and how you're going to record it and your goals within a controlled framework. This is where a research plan can be an advantage by helping to break down that research into realistic goals and dividing those goals into tasks that are easily managed. Start your research plan by defining your project's purpose. What are your aims and what are you researching? And this, this will definitely have an influence on your plan framework. By having your plan in an order, this will make your time management more meaningful and ultimately more productive. A research plan. There are many advantages to designing a research plan around a project. For example, census returns from 1841 to 1921 for a one place study or even a one name study will require methodical planning to ensure you can sell each page from the schedules and extract the right information. It will make you conscious of how much time you spend on a task. A plan shows progress no matter how small and acts as a reminder that you are moving forward. You can validate and analyse the sources timelessly as you work through your list. Documents that are maybe unfit for purpose or at conservation or cannot be located at the time that you have required the, the document to be out to you can often get forgotten about as a follow up. So if you flag this in your plan to review later with the archivist, then you won't forget about the document. It will keep you focused on the different elements or sections of your project, and it will also show up areas lacking valuable data. To get the most out of consulting sources, you really do need to do your homework first. And that means look at all the online catalogues for the archives that you will be visiting during your research. Planning your visit. Which archives are you going to visit? What days and times are they open? Is there a late night? Do you have to book and pay for a seat or can you get a slot easily? Many archives post-COVID have severely restricted their opening times, largely owing to staff cutting or staff working from home. So reduced hours and days will have an impact on completing your project. So being aware of those restrictions allows you to plan effectively. Online catalogues. 
Plan the sources that you want to look at with your archive catalogue and your Excel worksheet open in front of you. Type those reference numbers and your description of your source straight into the working research plan. You will find the unexpected and want to add that into the list also. Online catalogues are important to check before you visit as some might be outdated. So email the archives to inquire that the online catalogue that you can see is the most up to date one um, for you to use. Document access from the online catalogue. It should tell you whether the document is open and can be viewed or off site. So needs to be ordered in. It should tell you if it's closed and if so, until when. Special permission. Check whether special permission is needed to self-image the document. Many deposited collections at the National Records of Scotland, for example, have um, restrictions to self-image the document. This might mean you may have to spend time transcribing the document or documents or you might need to email the current owner for permission. And this will add extra time to your project, but marking this to follow up ensures that this is not forgotten about. Some tips. Make your research plan easy to use. It is there to simplify the process of research, not complicate it. Sort out your to-do list in order of priority, so high, medium and low. Colour code your columns to highlight priority one, priority two, etc. Have a research plan working draft as well as a master research plan. That's the belts and buckles which you keep updated daily. Don't restrict yourself to just researching one or two people or subjects that day. Arrange more options in case unexpected problems arise with the documents or the archives computer system stops working. So have a backup plan so that your day is not wasted. You might find that one archive has to close early. Well, is there another archive that you need to visit? And you've already recorded this in your search plan. So basically you're good to go. Have a big list of everything that you want to do, but make sure you have a way of sorting it by priority. <clears throat> research plan, plan is a framework that shows you how you intend to approach your topic. The key is to make it work for you so that you can see goals and achievements both at the same time. And you can easily see which direction your research is heading and keep focused on where you want to end up. It will show you if you have consulted the wrong kinds of records where another set might have been more suitable. It will show you duplication, which we all know happens all the time. So there are different ways of writing a research plan. You could do a written outline, a narrative, a timeline, a concept map. It can be on paper, in a notebook, it can be on a Word table, for example, or it can be on Excel. <clears throat> to begin, you should make two Excel files. I've created templates for those who need them. The first file is called a working plan in draft. In this file, list all the things you need to look at in the order of priority. You can use different colours for different levels of importance, as my example shows here. Remember to record everything relevant to your project as you work through the online catalogues. And you will refer to this daily and you will likely move the priorities around depending on what your research uncovers. So this is your behind the scenes plan. It should remain flexible. The column relating to description might not be the, the description in the online catalogue and some don't have descriptions so you have to make up your own description. It might be your description which includes the reason why you want to look at the document in the first place. You might even include just a date and the person's name from a large bundle of letters but it allows you to identify exactly what document you want from the bundle. Because if you're anything like me, once you get into the archives, 
all common sense goes out the window and you completely forget what you're looking for. So if any documents that you have requested are not delivered to you that day, mark to review the status at a later stage. You will likely review the order of priority several times, but you will not forget to consult that document. Your working plan is a draft. It's, it's just that. It's a working document that will be reviewed, amended, entries deleted and updated daily as your research progresses. You remove, you remove the, the details of, this, of the documents or uh, document that you viewed, transcribed or imaged that day and copy them over to your master research plan. Then you will have a new set of priorities knowing you've covered the previous ones. Setting column width, colour or font in Excel is really very easy indeed. There are plenty of online tips on Google or publications such as Excel for dummies. Or ask a friend or colleague who uses Excel to give you some lessons or tips. Make sure you freeze the frames on the top line. This is the line that, um, that, that's your column headings. And this allows you to scroll to the very bottom of your worksheet, yet keep the headers at the top so you know which columns you are, are in without having to return to line one. And a second file, my project's um, master plan where everything that I have already consulted is kept in one file. This is my Belts and Buckles master project plan. Notice the columns to the right which show that I've imaged it. This information I would have transcribed over from my working research draft. In, if you look in the bottom, the bottom row of the plan, you will see I have given each archive its own worksheet. Now this is actually quite important. This allows me to find anything I want quickly, depending on the archive. And you can copy and paste your, your settings to each worksheet. It's clean, it's clear, and it's simple. So in summary, a research plan is a vital tool that anyone can and should get into the habit of using for all projects, small or large. Find all the sources relevant to your project from online catalogues and add those details into your working research draft from the beginning so you know what is ahead of you. As you add information to your master research plan, witnessing the small triumphs can be very motivating indeed. Those victories encourage you to continue working on your project through to completion. I've shown you how Excel works for a project and how it has made my life a lot easier. Whatever approach you consider for your own research plans, choose one that works for you and remember and stick to it. I wish you all the best in your research. Happy hunting.